This is a Ricoh CX-1. It was about $500 when it was new. And, well, this one, the sensor's gone bad. May have gotten wet, whatever. But, uh, anyway, I thought we'd uh, strip it down and see what uh, is going on inside. I will warn you that uh, because this has a strobe in it, you never want to take apart something that has a strobe because of the dangers of electrocution, shock, these store very high voltages. So anyway, just uh, sit back and enjoy this video and let's see what's going on inside here. I won't torture you by making you watch me remove every tiny screw out of here, but uh, my general plan is to do this in chunks. I'm going to start with the screws on the outside like this. We'll see what falls apart. Um, and then when we have something interesting to look at, we'll stop, take a look at that, and then move on. Okay, so first, the external screws. I've taken out the nine external screws. Okay, continuing on, the uh, case is starting to split um, like this. And just with those nine screws, okay. So it looks like we got something interesting to look at. Let me get it set up so we can see it clearly. Over here, this is the battery compartment and the door was here. Uh, the battery contacts are here. Here's that strobe light I was warning you about in the circuitry. So that's something you don't want to mess with. Um, we've exposed a few more screws here. This is a focusing LED and this is one of the motors for the lens, one of the focus or the uh, zoom. Here's another uh, motor for the lens and that's about it. So okay, let's take out those screws and see what we got. While I was fiddling with the screws around here, this top piece started to come off. So. That's going to be necessary, but it's not ready to come all the way off. And the screws that I was removing actually caused the lens to come loose, but not all the way. I think we're going to have to flip it over and take a look at the other side and see what's going on there. Maybe remove the back panel and see if there's any screws back there holding it in. Well, just in flipping it over, the back uh, panel came off and exposes this. Some other pieces are falling out of the side over here. These are just like little things that uh, hold the sides together, hold the uh, strap, uh, hand strap. Um, and the top is trying to fall off. Um, so yeah, um, whoa, another side piece fell off. This is more of a decoration. So let's uh, again take a close up and see what we got going on. Here on the back we have the LCD screen. If I were a wizard, I'd figure out how to use that with my Raspberry Pi. Um, we have the buttons, so here's this kind of a mouse type arrangement. Um, and then there's the regular buttons for the different functions. Um, there's the speaker down here. So when you're doing like a video playback, that would be it. We have the cable for the upper piece, which will pop off of there. And yeah, I'm going to fuss around with this a little bit to see if we can get it off there nicely. Okay, the top piece has come loose, so let's just look at that. Here again is the focusing light, a little LED that shines out to help it focus in dark situations. Here's the upper panel, the power button. Uh, this is the zoom. And then of course the uh, take the picture button. And this is the switch for different functions. Uh, under here we have a couple more screws, three, four more screws. Let's take those apart. I got the two screws out that hold this together and we'll remove this and it should expose the switches. Okay, so this is the uh, function selector uh, patch right there. That, uh, this part here, when it rotates around, connects different sections of this, enabling different functions, shutter release, and uh, what is that? Oh, power button. Okay, and the power button. Should have known that one. Okay, so that is the upper panel. And that's about as stripped down as we're going to go. 
As you can see down here, I've been removing some screws and little brackets and whatever. Let's do a walk around before I uh, get it too far and we uh, can't recognize what belongs to what, what goes where. Okay, so we'll start up here on the top. Uh, this was the cable slot where the upper panel plugged in. Uh, here we have a motor. This is the flash. Apparently, this is a battery, and it's not easy to replace. It would, uh, my guess is, it would keep the uh, the specs or the you know whatever the settings on the camera between uses. Um, and going across here, just cabling, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Let's uh, change sides. This is the uh, right side of the camera. This would be the USB port, and this was the sound port. Uh, just some screws along here, the wrist strap. There were two wrist straps on this camera, one of them fastened here. And yeah, that's all for this side. Okay, let's keep going around. Nothing new on the bottom. This is the uh, battery compartment again, and one of the motors over here, and obviously some cabling. I found another motor over here, which I had missed, so there's another motor. Uh, spring, which I haven't figured out quite yet, uh, some cabling. And a component, again, that I haven't identified, so we'll have to get it farther apart before we uh, we can know what that thing is. And then back to the top. I was struggling trying to get this thing off of here, this LCD screen. Turns out it's a Sony. It says Sony on it, which is interesting. I missed a screw. So, okay, so now we get the button panel off. And the ribbon cable's already been removed. It was up here, and it went up to the uh, top panel. And here is the LCD ribbon connector, and if I can remove that nicely, theoretically, this LCD screen may come off of there, and again, I don't know if I can ever use it for anything, but it would be nice to try. Well, I've been struggling trying to figure out the next bit, because I'm, I can't seem to get this thing disconnected, this screen, um, and I can't get the front module disconnected. But finally, I think I've got it. There's these two connectors right there. They come up pretty easily. Yes, and... Let's see if I can work that loose. One. And... Nope. Can't see it. I'm going to have to struggle with this one a little bit. It looks like it's jammed in the slot. I think I'm almost. Oh, okay. Ta da! I could do it on camera. That's a miracle. Okay, so this is the lens module, and we'll uh, keep attacking this other piece. So, this is where the lens came from, and it sits in front of the rear screen. I decided to go after the battery compartment because I'd already removed these screws. And it was the other side that was giving me trouble. There's this stake. Let me remove it. Oh, I finally figured that out. Um, there's this piece of metal that goes up into a notch. And on top of that, it was this piece down here was wrapped around the end of that circuit board. So. Yeah, okay, so that piece is off of there, okay. Um, yeah, so there, let's see if I can get a good light. There's the battery compartment exposed, there are the contacts again. There's the spring, there's a capacitor, my guess is that's for the flash. Again, that's one of the reasons you don't wanna mess with this because that could deliver. If that was not discharged, I did make sure it was discharged, but if that was not discharged, that could deliver a lethal uh, zap. Okay, and now I've got to figure out how to get this screen off, get that cable out of there. But as you can see, we're getting to the point where this is this piece is pretty much done. And then we'll have to go attack the uh, front lens, which I think is going to be the most interesting part. I finally figured out how the screen was on there. It was on there with glue. So just a few little spots of glue and using my fingers and very carefully peeling up on it. I got it unstuck, seems to be restuck. And then this cable is just uh, pushed into this slot right here. It's a typical uh, 
cable connector. And that's it. Again, it would be interesting to see if I could do something with this. Let me put it to, a, to the side and we'll go on to the next. This is the USB port and this is the audio port, audio out port, just for orientation. Um, and this is where the, uh, the uh, rear screen plugged in. Uh, this is the capacitor for the flash and my guess is this has to be in there by a uh, plug, yeah. Okay, so there goes the brains of this. Uh, so this is where all the logic happens. And the only remaining piece now is the deadly flash, which I talked to you about. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. Let's, uh, let's go back to uh, looking at this thing. This is the lens, obviously, and this little jack screw fell out of it. My guess is it's what extends the lens. So um, there's screws on the back. Let's start by removing those screws and see what it reveals. I've removed all the screws I can find, about six of them, and something I noticed here is, you see this moving? How oh, it's moving in there? Yeah, I think that is that automatic uh, stabilization um, that, uh, you know, the sensor is in there floating on this device, and this helps smooth any shakiness in the camera. So that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, I've got this back loosened, and this was not made to be taken apart nicely. Let's put back together. And here we can see the sensor right in there. And you can see there's like goop or something on the on the edges of it along here. Yeah, and that's why this thing wasn't working is because that stuff, whatever it was, migrated out into the sensor. So every picture you took was framed by this fuzzy stuff around the outside of it. Here we can see the that uh auto stabilization thing working. It's on this series of little pins and whatever. It allows the sensor to move around and, and uh, counteract any jiggling of the camera. And this sensor module is on here like this and it comes off and this is the part underneath where the lenses and so forth are. We've got some screws to remove um, and you can see the gears out here uh, where the focusing will take place. Um, not sure what that is right there, that lens right there, but okay, let's keep after it. All cameras have to have a way to control the amount of light that comes in, and they did a really clever job here. You see this? This actually opens and closes the aperture, and this one over here changes the size, and then there's yet another one over here that also changed the size. So apparently they have several fixed f-stops they can use. This lens right here is actually two lenses. This upper one moves this way and the lower one moves that way. Let's see if I can get it to move. There you go. Can you see that moving underneath there? It's either uh, the automatic focusing or it's uh, part of the uh, movement compensation. Not sure. If anybody knows, leave a comment. I'd love to know. Let's see if I can capture this on video before it all falls apart. It's just amazing. This uh, bus here, there's motor, motor, motor. This is the motor that pulls the lens in and out. Um, there's sensors on here. There's another little motor right there. Uh, there there's uh, like start-stop sensors. And I think I'm missing a motor. And this big motor meshes with this gear right here. And this is what extends the telephoto lens. This is the uh, just the lens bus, control bus. I mean, I've, I've uh, played with computers that were simpler than this. So motor, motor, sensor, sensor, uh, main connection, motor, motor over here, sensor. And there's another sensor I'm missing somewhere in there. So, yeah, that's just to control the lens.
and those grooves along the wall are actually threads and that's what moves the lens in and out for the telephoto aspect. And let's remove this from the frame. Whoa, that was exciting. Okay, big spring. And this is the rear lens element set. And there's the front. Okay. There's that mechanism. This little silver piece right in here controls the lens cap. There's one on each side. Each one controls half the lens cap. You can see it moving there. And the last part of this amazing device, this is the uh, rear element of the, of the uh, lens. And it's... Uh, got many different adjustments. I don't know if you can see that, but that rear plate is moving and you can see it moves on this kind of strange wavy pattern. So this thing is moving in and out and then uh, more simply, the rear element can be moved in and out like that and it moves on a wavy pattern. So yeah, this is why uh, they use computers to design cameras these days. Well, that's our teardown of this Ricoh CX-1 and uh, a fascinating device. This part alone came out of that lens module, just these over here and the rest of it around here is from the case. Uh, they packed all that technology into one little box. Amazing. Okay, well that was it. I hope you found this useful and interesting in your photographic and general knowledge pursuits.